Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today we're just going to be covering quickly how to make a boat. So the first thing that we need to look at is how to actually design it in Blockbench because we need to know how to lay out the seating position in order to actually do that. So uh, some tips when designing your boat, I would suggest if you don't want the water to kind of look like it's coming through, to give it a little bit extra padding, maybe about um, double the amount for the base that I have here. I have two pixels here for depth. I would probably go about four, um, four or five maybe for the base of the boat. Um, that will allow it so the water doesn't kind of just show on the lowest layer when it goes and bobs up and down. Um, though you don't necessarily need to do that, it's just a minor visual thing that uh, happens when you're in this kind of boat, but um, outside of that, you might have noticed that if we disable some of the components, we'll just disable the floor here, uh, you can see that the position of the access point of where the entity is, is directly um, over where the player is going to be sitting. So. Basically, we're going to be sitting in this area right here, and that's that can be defined by the uh, grid of where the pattern in the entity designing platform is. So when you're building your boat, make sure to build around the square that is automatically generated in Blockbench. Uh, that's really important in order to make a boat actually work because that's where you're going to be sitting, right? Uh, you can offset the height of where you're sitting, but not the position for the X and Z axis. So keep that in mind when you're actually designing it. I have a, di a few different things going on in this particular one. I have a little motor at the back here. Uh, this is controlled by the blades, which basically will be animated. Um, as you notice on the side here, I only have one folder uh, for all the different components. Uh, if you're using subfolders, it's not gonna work. So uh, Minecraft dropped support for subfolders for um, entities for a long time ago so if you're using subfolders it's not going to work with um, that you'll get errors it'll probably stop about loading of around 75% or something like that so make sure that you have only one folder uh, enough to select your animations and that should work another notable mention is you do need the modded entity uh, workspace which is this one right here and when you're setting it up, uh, don't add a class to the model itself. That's really important because if you add a class, it completely b breaks the game for some reason. Um, I think it mCreator is not supported for this feature just yet. Uh, you do need the model identifier still and the file name. Also make sure that you're on the right uh, version for the Moj maps. Um, which are one of these, any any particular one that says Moj Maps or MCP, I think also might work. Um, when you're actually importing your model, it'll tell you what version you need. So we want this one right here for the uh, latest version of mCreator for 2024.2. So this is the 1.17 plus, and that will support any version above that. So. Uh, don't worry about your texture size, just make sure that it is uh, flipped Y axis is enabled or you're going to have an upside down boat. I found that out when I was making it. Alright, so when you get that, uh, you can always go back and change a few things uh, when you go into your properties. Uh, you will be able to change the model identifier and the class if you ended up accidentally adding a class. Uh, so, for example, if we go over to our other project here. You can see that I have just the model identifier and then the file name is the same thing as the model identifier and I just have a empty class here for the um, entity itself but all these other settings are pretty much set. Uh, make sure your UV maps all set up and then you can finally go and go to file, export, Java entity and then export it to your desktop. So that's the main function parts of the boat. Now let's go into mCreator and I'll show you uh, what I did for the entity itself. So to make a boat, there's only three components. Um, one update tick for the boat itself. And then there is a on internal uh, entity spawn for the boat. And then we have the living entity. So there's all, it's really pretty compact and stuff like that. So going into the main 
visual properties, what we have is the motorboat, which is the GUI name for the entity. Um, we also got imported our model. Now, if you haven't imported your textures before, then you want to go to the resources tab, textures files, and then you want to basically go import and then select entity textures and then import your entity texture. And after you've done that, go to the other tab, which is 3D models and texture mappings and import your Java entity. You'll be presented with uh, something that looks like this and you want to set up your animations and then click set new animations. So for example, uh, I have the blades. So what I did was I went to the Z axis and set animation and that allowed me to import the model there. Um, now the, the Z axis actually controls the spinning. I already tested it using the rotation in the model. I can quickly demonstrate that. So if we select the folder that we wanted to basically go ahead and test the rotation, you can always uh, click this little icon where it says center pivot point and that will allow you to put it in the center of something. Uh, you can also manually change the pivot point so the animation is more centralized. And what I did was I just basically rotated it on each one of these axes to see what direction um, it basically rotated. So in this case, what I wanted to, was the Z axis, which is the blue one, because it was rotating in the direction that I wanted. So that's how I knew that I needed the animation for um, M Crater. So I'm just not going to save that. And if we open up uh, M Crater again, uh, when you do the animation, you just set the same axis or you can set it up however you want. But uh, going back to the living entity, um, the other things that have changed was the import of the texture, import of the model, and then I went ahead and uh, set the spawn egg, which I will be using for part of the tutorial, but uh, it's not necessary that you need a spawn egg for it per se. You could disable that, but I set the color and everything here, and it's under the spawn eggs uh, basic... Um, creative tab so everything else here is basically left no model layers so there's no model layers that I have for this particular boat uh, behavior I've set this to creature and undefined and everything else is pretty much the default minus the setting to make it writable and then I also set the movement control just so it's uh, for forward this also controls the backwards movement control as well and I didn't want side to side movement so basically I just disabled that through um, not checking this box. Everything else is set up uh, for the drop when it actually dies. This is where you want to set your uh, boat item when you're actually spawning the entity. Uh, you could technically go ahead and spawn the entity no problem with um, basically just like right clicking on a block and having the entity spawn. You could also do that through uh, another procedure. I'll quickly put something together before the end of the episode um, or the tutorial for an example so you guys can see how to do that. But alternatively, you could just use a spawn egg and that would work as just as well. Everything else on this, this page is basically the same as default. I've set some generic sounds for the block for when it's stepped on. The other sounds are the default ones. Sync data, we're not using any of that. Inventory, I have disabled no inventory for that. We did set up some triggers, but I suggest actually generating these after you go ahead and uh, create your boat. And for AI tasks, as you can see, we have no AI going on here. We don't want the boat to do anything unless you want it to like follow people or something like that. And then in some cases, you might be able to control that through um, some tasks and stuff. Just be in mind that it might mess up the controls and stuff when the entity is being written. So keep that in mind when you're actually designing it. Other than that, everything else is the same. Spawning, I've disabled these two boxes. So basically, the entity doesn't spawn naturally in the um, world or anything like that. Because that would be a little bit weird to come across a boat on land and stuff. So... Um, yeah, just uncheck those two things. All right, so once you've got that part done, go back to your mod elements and you want to go ahead and now by default, you won't be able to set the drop properties. So you'll have to do that after you generate the 
entity itself so you can actually place down the spawn egg if you're doing it through that if not then you're going to need an item to put in that slot and then you want to go back to your triggers and generate the on entity tick update and the on internal entity spawn triggers so we'll take a look at those in just a second so the update one is pretty simple uh, what I got going here is this allows the boat to stay submerged just enough where it will be considered swimming and where it will basically um, allow the override the gravity of the entity so I have the gravity just above what the um, or the movement vector on the y-axis to push the entity up just above what the gravity is for the boat so all entities have a gravity of 0.08 so I went with 0 0.08 point or 0 0.085 which is just over what the gravity is just to keep it up above the um, gravity wise so it doesn't keep bobbing all over the place and this seems to help stabilize it a little bit more I'm also using the X Delta movement which is basically the velocity on older versions what it was called and what that allows it to do is just allow the velocity for the entity to go on the X and Z axis without needing to worry about um, having it kind of chug along every time this procedure is basically run so basically this allows the entity x and z movement to be the same while we're just forcing it up during that particular part so that's all that that particular procedure does we're also testing if the block is a fluid source and if it is uh, basically just a 0 0.25 above the water uh, line or the base of the entity so basically we're testing if the entity itself it's probably easier just for me to kind of explain this in the uh, thing here so basically what you have is your entity your boat pretend that's your boat and we're testing if the water line is basically here so if it's right around here if it's 0 0.25 then we know that um, we are submerged so the bottom of the entity would be this part right here and we're just testing plus 0 0.25 above the entity which is where we want the water level just to make sure that the entity is submerged that much now a solid 1.0 is one full block so it would basically mean that we want our boat only one quarter of the way above the water or below the water level so Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense with the math part. Um, other than that, uh, to create this, all you need to do is you need to grab an if statement, then go to your block prop, pro block procedures, and then data, and then you're going to scroll down where it says fluid source, and we're going to remove that block right there on it, and we're going to grab one for the data, and then it should say get block at X Y Z. We're going to place that one down here, and we want the position of the entity so we're going to go to entity procedures and then we're going to go to data and we're going to grab our x and place our x here and then we're going to go back and grab our y we're going to need to adjust that and we're going to grab our z so we're testing for the entity location for that and then what we want to do is we want to grab math block and we're going to remove the y put our y entity here and then we're going to go ahead and grab a number and we're going to set this to 0 0.25 and that's all that we do for the condition and then for the movement part we need to go to entity procedures actions and then we're going to scroll down until we see the one where it says attempt to or pardon me attempt to override motion vector uh, entity and then our vx vy vz so we want this one here and we're going to delete all these blocks here we don't need them we're only going to need um one for the middle part and that's going to tell us to um allow us to go up over the gravity now again by default the gravity is 0 0.08 so we're going to go 0 0.085 and that should be enough for overriding the gravity so it doesn't stay still and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead back to our data for our entity and we're going to scroll down where it says x delta 
movement and the Z delta movement. We need these two blocks right here for the um, entity velocity. So again, this was the velocity blocks that we were using before. And that's all you need to do to create it. Just make sure it's on the uh, green block and then you're good to go. And then for the other procedure, what we need to do is we need to run a command for uh, the entity. Now, if you're on forge, then the command here for this bottom one is going to be forge and not neoforge. So on newer versions, you will be using neoforge. You'll have to check the command when you're actually going through it. Uh, just type it out like attribute at s and then neoforge swim speed or whatever version it should come up in the list there is it isn't a huge list the reason why we need to set these two attributes is because we want to make sure the boat doesn't move on land uh, that's the first thing that's running so we're doing attribute at s which is the current entity running the command and we're running the command through the entity itself because this is when the entity first spawns and then we're doing the minecraft generic dot movement dot or underscore speed and then we're doing the base set and then we're doing a zero after that so basically what that does is makes it not move on land and that way when the boat is docked it doesn't really go any there anywhere we can push it into the water still but it doesn't actually work on land so if you wanted it to work on land, you just set this to like a really low number, like 0 0.05 or something like that, and that should work. Um, for the other attribute, we're doing at, attribute at s again, neoforge for the namespace colon, and then swim underscore speed base, and then we're setting this as set, and then we're setting it to a number. So I have it set to eight. This is uh, pretty fast. You might want it around four or a little bit lower depending on how fast you want your boat um eight is pretty fast it's probably maybe fast as the elytra where four would be more around a regular boat speed maybe i'm not sure exactly how fast all boats and stuff work so you'll have to kind of play around with it to get an exact value but in short what this does is it allows the boat to move faster on water when it's actually submerged so that's really important when we're actually setting up the uh, movement speed and everything so you can save that uh, to find these commands, command blocks. I should probably just quickly show you that. Go to entity procedures, actions, and then scroll down. It should say execute command clear and in the name of, and then you basically just fill out the command that you have up here. Now, if the commands change, then you're going to have to go into game and try to figure out how to format the code, but it should be similar to the way that I have it set up now. It hasn't changed too much. I just did this workspace a while ago um, after I made the first tutorial and it seemed to not change too much. All right, so to demonstrate how the mechanics work, uh, we're just going to basically use a spawn egg for this. Again, uh, I'll do a quick tutorial um, on how to do something with an item, but uh, first we need to actually see how the mechanics work. So if we place it in the water, as you can see, we're basically going ahead and spawning the boat. Now it might do a little bit of chunky like spawning stuff but once you're in it and start rolling it's actually goes quite fast this is on speed eight so again like i said with the water you might want it to be a little bit higher it seems to be going up a couple extra blocks so having it um generate above the um like five five blocks or five pixels down you should be good to go with that um, it doesn't look like it's going over five pixels, so uh, five pixels in height should work. Uh, just keep in mind when your boat's going this fast, it does take chunks a while to load, so you might have a little bit of lag with actually um, running the thing. This is completely normal with the world generation and stuff like that. I did check the TPS, and it doesn't look like that it's actually acting in a way that it would be any huge impact on the... Um, actual movement but if you do need to run the entity update tick to uh, the uh, entity what you can do is you can run it through the tick function or tag and what you would do is you would basically go ahead and run it through a command for your script and you could apply um, something just to run like make a command to run the script itself for the entity tick update 
and then you would run that command in a function and then you would take that function and put it in the uh, Minecraft tick function tag and then that will basically run it. Uh, what you would want to do though is you want to do basically at uh, execute at um, probably at s and it won't come up like that right now but it should work in the thing if not then what you would do at e uh, or pardon me as you would want as and then at s and then you would basically go ahead and select your command um, for run and then you would type your command here for that particular entity and that will work in the functions as well so you can run it through your tick thing uh, tick tag or your function and then through the uh, function tag called tick so minecraft tick and that seems to actually really help the improvement for the um what do you call it the um ticks per second as well i recently tested that on world and it's improved the tick um ticks per second by 200 percent, which was around the default settings for the game so that's how you can basically improve it and stuff like that. Now let's go ahead and just see how you could basically make an item quickly. And we'll, um, again, if you break the item or break the boat, it'll give back the item that you basically spawned it in. So we'll do that quickly. So I quickly put something together in the workspace just so it was a little bit easier to follow um, because most of you will probably want a item anyways. So basically if we right click anywhere uh, right now, we could look, right click on the sky and we'll place the entity at our location. We can then uh, go ahead and destroy that. It gives us our boat back. And then we would basically make this item a uh, crafting recipe and everything like that. And then we would be able to craft it as well. Uh, if we right click in the water, we can actually see that it will put it in the water itself. So it still works the exact same way as you can see. And we can r run on land and it will, we can still push it into the water and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and just take a look at that procedure quickly. And I'll show you how to basically do all that. So you're only going to need two additional parts for this. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is your item. Basically select your item. Now when you're importing your item under the resources textures, make sure that it is for a item texture. So basically the one with the diamond uh, icon is for items. Uh, you can set your custom model if you wanted to, uh, if you really wanted to and stuff like that. Not required, but go ahead if you want to. And then for this one, uh, we are basically going to select our GUI texture and everything else is the same. Don't need entity states or anything like that. I've um, basically just um, given it a name here. We can go with motorboat uh, just to make it a little bit more user friendly. I put it under a creative tab and that's all that I did for basically the properties there. Advanced, nothing, uh, neither for fruit properties either. I have set a procedure when click, right clicked uh, with the anti position. I've used uh, this procedure trigger here to allow us to go ahead and create our custom script for spawning the entity. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Again, um, all this is located here, right clicked, and we have a few things going on here. I've set uh, local variables on the side here over on the left hand side. Uh, to do that, you're going to need three number variables. And I just called it uh, n a look, and then the uh, axis that I'm going to be storing the look position on. This just makes it a little bit easier to work with in the workspace itself because we are using it multiple times. So I wanted to store it as a um, variable. So you're going to need variables for the look position. It doesn't matter what you call it, just call it something. Once you've done that, make sure that you um, can go ahead and grab the uh variable block under custom variables there will be a new um listed one here and it should be the name of your local variable so just go ahead and select that and you're going to need to start building the procedure so i'm going to go ahead and start from scratch and show you how to do all that but now the variable stuff is out of the way it'll be a little bit easier to follow so uh what you need is you need an if statement and you're going to place that down here. We're going to need to go to logic, grab a red operator, which allows us to test for an item. We're going to go to Minecraft components, grab a provided item stack. This is because we're using a ent or item trigger, so we can use the provided item stack. 
And then we need to go to entity procedures data and get the item in main hand. This will allow us to test if that provided item is in the main hand of the entity. So once you've done that, in case your variables and all your other script inside this block, so we can go ahead and test if the um, for set our basic variables. So to do that, we're going to go to local variables after we've created the local variables. And we're going to basically paste three of these down. And we're going to basically set the Y, Z, and X ones. And then we need to go to entity data and scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And it should say, uh, look position of entity with ray tracing distance, fluid mode, block mode. And there's an easier way to actually just find that. If you just type look into the um, search bar up here, you can just see it right at the bottom here. It says look position with ray tracing. Just grab these blocks from here. It's just easier than scrolling all the way down there. And we're going to go ahead and grab all three of these so look and then we're going to grab the x one and then we're going to do look again and we're going to grab the z one and it's just basically grabbing it from these from the thing here and as you can see it's the exact same blocks uh, now that we've done that we want to set the uh, distance to four on all of these and we're going to put them in the order of how the um our variable names so x y and z we want it to be on source only. So basically that part's all sorted out now. Now what we need to do is we need to test if the block position at that look location is um, a fluid source. So we're going to go ahead and go to block procedures, data, and scroll down until it says fluid source. And we're gonna place that here. We're gonna delete that block selector. Go back to block data, grab the x y get block at position block and we're going to delete the x y and z location uh, position ones and we're going to go inline just so it's a little bit easier to read and we're going to go ahead to custom variables and grab the one for conditions so we're going to put our x y and z on the um, part here and this will test for the look position where we're looking at uh, rather than if we were to just do the X, Y, and Z, that would be at the entity's location. And we still want to spawn the boat, so we're going to actually do an else statement as well. And then what we can do is we can go to our world procedures, actions, and then we can scroll down where it says spawn entity. Uh, we just want the basic one. And we're going to set our motorboat. And we're going to put that one down on below too. This will allow it to spawn at the entity's position if there isn't water located. And if there is water located, then we want to sp spawn it at the look location. So we're going to remove all those. And we're going to grab our X, Y, Z blocks again. And that will allow us to go ahead and spawn the entity at the look position rather than at the entity location. And the only other thing that we need to do is we need to consume the item. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to go to um, set main hand of item. So that's under actions. And then if we scroll down a little bit, there is set main hand of item of provided entity. And we're going to move that um, one down. We're going to remove the main hand item or the item selector. And we're just going to grab the main hand item here. And then what we need is a math operator. And we're going to place that down here, put our one there, and we're going to set this to subtract. And that will allow us to subtract one. But we need to get the entity, um, the main hand item amount. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our entity procedures data. And then you're looking for one called um, get number of items in stack. So provided stack state, we're going to remove that provided stack state. and We're just going to put our main hand item there. And that's all you need to do for the procedure. Again, all these procedures will be in the workspace projects. So you'll be able to import these all um, like they are in the workspace as well as get the workspace and the assets as well. So that's the only procedure that you really need for actually spawning the item. And this will remove the item when the entity is spawned. So hopefully that makes sense. Outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.